just the one oscillator. Obviously, with a delay. Let's see what happens with bringing in this sub now. everyone, Gaz Williams here. I am, wow, super excited about this because here we have, yes, the Moog Subharmonicon. Now, I've had this for a few weeks and I haven't been able to say anything about it, which, wow, it's such a beautiful, lovely instrument. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a, a little bit of a love affair with it. Now, one of the things you will see absolutely uh, prominent is this patch panel. Uh, so this patch panel means you can route things internally, but also externally. And yes, this thing is Eurorackable and I am going to put it in my Eurorack. So if you've seen my video recently, which was a, like a live stream talking about my first Eurorack, well, here is the second one. And uh, yeah, I mean, whoo, ha ha. It is a very awesome piece of kit. <laughs> um, yes, so 20th of May, I'm going to do a live stream where I put this into my Eurorack. So please join us there. Anyway, what is this exactly? Well, please go and watch Ed's review on Sonic State first. So I don't have to explain anything. <laughs> watch that and then we'll take it from there. Because what I want to do with it, I want to make some music with it. So I'm just going to create something from scratch. So to get it to a, a place of nothingness, I'm going to take all the volumes off of the oscillators. I will explain a little bit as I go along about this. And what I've also got going on here, very, very simple. I've got the Moog Subharmonicon with uh, no MIDI keyboard or anything plugged into it, but just the audio output is running through the memory man with Hazarai. Now, this is a really exciting pedal. I've had it for years and it's still... Oh, I still find super interesting things with it. Anyway, that will stay off for the moment. We will bring that in. And yes, it will be a momentous time because, you know, as great as this thing is, the combination of this and effects, as you'll see, is just dynamite. The layout of this is super interesting. You've got two oscillators. Both oscillators have two sub-oscillators, hence its name, subharmonican. This is dealing with the subharmonics. It's great. I think the Troutonium, it's a, syn a like a synthesizer, I guess you can call it that, an early electronic instrument that uses the concept of subharmonics, which is about dividing down from your root rather than building harmonics up if that makes any sense. I'm not going to go into that now. Um, Luke Pop did an ace video about the original version of this, which appeared after, I think he went to the Moog Fest and there was a builder workshop and they had them there. But this is now the proper full release version of it. Some things have changed around a little bit. I think there's a lot more added functionality onto it. And of course, it lives in the same format as the Mother 32 and the DFAM, so they all go together beautifully and their patch panels are all aligned, so yeah, wow. But for me, this is going into the Eurorack and I'm quite excited about that because I think the combination of having a keyboard and what you could do with that plus what you can do with this, that's going to be amazing. But anyway, we're going to focus just on this for the moment because this in itself is a, it's a, it's a, it's a trip.
So there we have it, the Moog Subharmonicon. Please watch Ed's review over on Sonic State to to learn more about it and get prices and all that kind of thing. I just wanted to go on a bit of a journey with it. But also, I am going to be putting this into my Eurorack on May the 20th, um, 8 p.m. UK time. So please join me for that because I'm not going to do it before then. So everything that I do will be the very first time that I'll have done it. But thanks so much for joining me on this little kind of voyage. And I think we should do a little bit of a play out too. So catch you soon. Uh, I'm Gas Williams. Bye for now. <laughs> Two, by the way, so let's bring our later one in now.